Hey YouTubers, welcome back to another episode of Small Engines Questions and Answers for Friday, November 25th, 2011. So welcome back everybody. We had a major snowstorm last week, uh, last Thursday. We had like 24 inches of snow, but it's pretty well all melted. And this is all that's left of it, not even six inches. And the snow all came down in one day, the whole 24 inches. And it really reminded me of the storm that you guys had down in the States a little while ago. Some people were out of power for approximately four days. We were out of power here for about 15 hours. So that's when having a generator comes in handy for sure. Now before I start today, a lot of people have asked me, what's this tool here behind me? Well, this tool here is a belt measurer. So if you're working on something, you don't have a part number for it or it's no longer available, you grab this tool, you insert your belt over here, just like this, pull it down, and then you can check the length of your belt. In this case here, this belt is 35 inches approximately. But I'll make a more detailed video in the future to show how to use this tool. And I highly recommend that if you're a small engine mechanic that you should own one of these tools. And I had a question from some people down under in Australia. Some YouTubers were asking me if I can shut the air intake of the stove real tight. Well, when this is pushed right to the far end here, it will only allow a minimum amount of air to go into the stove. It doesn't completely block all the air from going in the stove, but it sure reduces the amount so that your wood can burn a lot slower. And by next winter, I hope to have a gas heater in the shop here as my primary source and to have the wood stove as my secondary source of heat. My next question a YouTuber asked me, what oil is good for summer and what oil is good for winter? Well, what I mostly use in the summer is HD30 oil in my lawnmowers and other equipment. It's a much thicker oil. And in some equipment, you can also use 10W30 and also 5W30. The 5W30 is good for the summer and the winter. And in the winter time, I mostly use 5W30 and 5W20 oil in snow blowers. Now you can also buy these oils in a synthetic form as well. And it's the same in your chainsaw when it comes to the barn chain. You should use a winter grade oil in there as well. In the summertime, use a summer grade oil for the barn chain. The winter oil for your bar will be much thinner and in the summertime, it will be thicker. In my next question, some YouTubers often ask me, my snow blower has good belts, but it still won't blow the snow far. And they're wondering what's causing that problem. Well, what usually causes that problem is the idler pulley needs to be adjusted. And I'm talking about the auger belt today. This is the auger belt, usually in the front, and this is the drive belt. Now, if your blower won't blow snow, first check the auger belt here. What I'm talking about today, though, is the idler pulley right here. So like on this Honda snowblower here, the idler pulley, which is right here, is adjustable. What you would do is loosen the nut, push the pulley forward, so that when you push down the auger lever, the belt's tighter. And back to the Craftsman snowblower, this idler pulley here is not adjustable. The way you can tell if it's adjustable is you're going to see in the back a groove, and you'll be able to slide the pulley back and forth if it's adjustable. If there's only one hole in the back here where the pulley's bolted to, you cannot adjust it. It's stationary. So before you start replacing expensive parts on your snowblower like the belt and other parts, always check to see if the idler pulley is adjustable. Remember, it costs nothing to adjust this pulley and it may be your problem. Now another question I get sometimes about these snowblowers with a Briggs and Stratton engine is where is the spark plug located? Well, the spark plug is located behind here. You have to take this knob off. This cover will come right off. And the spark plug's right down in here. Now when you bought your snowblower, you should have received a spark plug wrench tool and it should fit down in here. If you didn't get that tool, you may have to remove these covers here, push them over a bit so you can slide in a socket and a ratchet in there to take the plug off. And here's one last view of that spark plug. It's usually an RC12YC from Champion. Another question I often get is people ask me, why does my snowblower only run on the choke? Well, nine times out of 10, it's a carburetor problem, especially on these Tecumseh engines. Sometimes all you have to do is remove the ball nut and the ball, clean it out, let it dry, and then put it back on. Sometimes it could just be bad gas or water in the fuel. But always remember, if it only runs on the choke, it's a fuel issue. That means it's starving for fuel. It's got nothing to do with the spark plug or anything else on the engine. And with these Tecumseh engines with the old style fuel caps with the metal dish in here, if this dish is gone, your fuel tank will not vent properly and after using your snowblower for a little while, like 10-15 minutes, it may not run properly because it's not allowing the fuel 
to vent down into the carburetor. So if this metal cap is missing, buy a new fuel cap. The new fuel cap comes with a rubber part here and it's much better than this old style cap. Before I end off today, I just want to tell you guys what's in these cans here because I've had a lot of questions regarding that. What I keep in these cans are the most common bolts and carriage bolts that I use to work on snowblowers. So in this can here I have these small quarter inch self-tapping bolts that are commonly used on snowblowers like the MTDs. And they come in very handy, I use these all the time. And then the rest of the cans are just carriage bolts that are often used. Some are 3 8 in diameter and some are 5 16 This is the most common carriage bolt I use on snowblowers, especially for the skid plates down over here. And the rest are just small quarter inch carriage bolts as well that are commonly used on snowblowers. I keep them there handy because I use these all the time. So that's pretty well all the time I have for today. Thanks for watching. I want to thank all my supporters. Again, I want to welcome all my new subscribers. Please check out my channel. There are hundreds of repair videos on there and I'm always posting new ones. And thanks again for sending questions. I haven't had much time lately to respond to them, but keep them coming anyways. So again, have a great weekend and we'll see you next Friday.